Good morning. So uh, as to announcements, Pastor Heather is back. So yay. Oh, she, yeah, applaud her, absolutely. And she's waving and everything. Um, really, if you look at what's been scrolling, a lot of it is just a reminder of everything that happened in January. It was a very busy month for us, and that's a cool thing. Coming up in February, in two weeks, we have our uh, Love Your Neighbor Sunday. Uh, and included in that are things that involve outreach to our neighbor. It is Super Bowl Sunday, which means it's all soup or bowl Sunday as well. And during the SOUP or bowl, and during that, um, we're going to be uh, collecting, as we always do. Uh, we're going to have a pot there, a kid holding the pot, and collecting uh, money. The money will go to the North Hills Community Outreach. We will also be collecting food, and the food will go to our food bank at the Hub. And so, uh, please come also, um, since the word neighbor is in it, and we're Pittsburghers, what do you got to do, right? So we're asking you, if you have a cardigan, <laughs> wear the cardigan as a Mr. Rogers kind of a deal. And, uh, and then after both services, we're going to bring up anybody who wants, and certainly everyone who has gone to the effort of rogering up, to... Um, to come and get uh, their picture taken. So we'll do this after both services. So please remember on the 12th to be fully cardiganated. Okay. Is there anything else that needs brought to the attention of the congregation? The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Let's share the peace. Let's please stand and begin our worship with the order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please kneel if you can. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm 
Jesus Christ is the light of the world, light no darkness can overcome. If Jesus can change water into wine, he can change us into children of light. Jesus, shine in us that we can shine in the world for the glory of God. It's the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. Let's pray together the prayer of the day. Holy God, you confound the world's wisdom in giving your kingdom to the lowly and the pure in heart. Give us such a hunger and thirst for justice and perseverance in striving for peace that in our words and deeds, the world may see the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And you can have a seat, and it's time for the children's sermon. Come on over here. Come on over here. All right, good. Good. Ah, good. More friends are coming. Excellent. All right. Here come some more friends. So today, we're going to play a little game. I don't know if you've ever played this before, but it's called I the Silly Rock Game. Okay? And what we do is we pick one person to be the leader, and they do the silly walk, and we all have to follow them doing the same silly walk. And then we'll take turns. How's that sound? Okay? Anybody have a silly walk they want to start us off with? Okay. So everybody, let's line up here. And you can, actually, you can walk down the aisle with your city, silly walk and we'll follow. Okay? All right. Show us your silly walk. Oh, nice, big, straight legs. Okay? Who's going to go follow them? There you go. Follow them. Walk. It's a silly walk. 
Good. Oh, I like that. Okay. All right, let's stop. Who wants to go next? Okay. Show us your silly walk. Okay. Oh, nice. Swing those arms and legs. Good. All right. Good. Who else wants to do it? You want to try, Mia? No? Nolan, you want to try? No? Fiona, you want to try? Okay. I'll lead us back this way. And let's do this. Let's go. It's a good thing I'm walking away from the camera. <laughs> All right. That was fun. So, one of the things that we learned, if you want to use our microphone, um, one of the things we learn is how important it is to follow God and to do what God does, right? And I don't know if God does silly walks, but maybe, because God has a, God's fun. God has a good sense of humor. So I'm thinking maybe God knows how to do a silly walk, right? But what God wants us to do is love the way God loves us and be kind to people the way God is kind to us and to work for the good of the world the way God takes care of the world. So think about if you were to walk in a way that showed God's love, what would that look like? Any idea? Here's what I'm thinking. Come on, let's line up here again. We'll do one more walk. This is God's love walk, okay? What we're going to do is we're just going to hold hands. Can you hold hands with the person behind you? Okay, we'll make a whole line of holding hands together. Okay? Can we make sure that Jonah's included? You want to hold hands with Otis? Okay? So we're all walking. Oh, yay, there you are there. We're all walking together. And when we do that, we want to make sure that everybody's with us. That's showing love. And everybody's included. And everybody's taken care of, right? And we're all together in God's name. Okay? All right. Thanks. Keep following God. first reading this morning is from Micah chapter 6. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. Oh, my people, <clears throat> excuse me, O oh, my people, what have I done to you? And what, have, and what have I wearied you? Answer me, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent you before Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now that King Balak of Moab devised what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him and what happened for, from Shittim to Gagal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. What shall, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, 
I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning. I will twerk. Where is one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the Lord? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that, as it is written, let the ones who boast, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. I'm going to start out by just thanking everyone for their prayers and love and support while I was recovering. Um, I'm doing much, much better. I'm glad to be back. It's been a really long time. So we have a good question before us today. What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? You're to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. That's Micah 6.8 a rather familiar verse to a lot of people. It's about as clear and precise a message as you can get from God. Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with God. Notice that these are all actions that we take. They're verbs. Do, love, walk. It's how we live day to day, how we relate to others in real time. This is not a measure of belief. It's not a test of theology. It's not knowing scripture or praying enough. 
And it's not new. God has been teaching God's people this from the very beginning. Do justice. Love kindness. Walk humbly with God. I read somewhere once that there are two great moments in a person's life. The moment you were born and the moment you realize why you were born. And Micah says, you know what God wants. This isn't new. You know why you are here. Do justice. God's justice is more than treating everyone the same. God's justice, the justice we are supposed to do, involves giving an extra boost to those in weaker, more vulnerable positions in society. The kingdom of God has preference for the weak, the powerless, the sick, the elderly, the homeless, those who aren't accepted as equal in a given culture, those who have a history of being oppressed. Do we intervene when someone is mistreated, when someone is treated as less than a child of God? This weekend was a powerful reminder of how we need to act for the kind of justice that God calls for all the time. Benjamin Franklin said, justice will not be served until those unaffected are as outraged as those who are. Are we outraged by the shootings and the beatings and the death toll? Are we outraged enough to do something? Archbishop Desmond Tutu said, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. Justice comes about not when a few activists get riled up, but when the masses remember silence is compliance and we do our best to make things right. When we do justice, when we make things right, we set a mighty example for our children and our grandchildren and believe it or not, we might actually change something. So love kindness. Love kindness. The Hebrew word is hesed. God's loving kindness toward us. God's unconditional faithfulness to God's people. In the New T Testament, it's the concept of grace. God's unconditional love for us. It is a love Jesus tells us we are to show to our neighbor. And then he tells us that our neighbor is pretty much everyone. Our neighbor is the people crowding around us at the grocery store, the person at the, the gas pump next to us, the person sitting next to you in church, that car that is pressing to get in line in the traffic at the merge, the person who asks us to wear a mask, the person who cuts us off, glares at us, and makes rude gestures. It is a love that goes above and beyond again and again, regardless of the behavior of the other person. It's easy to gloss over loving kindness as a requirement. I mean, who doesn't love kindness, right? But kindness goes beyond being nice. Kindness is a whole deeper thing. Because to be kind, you actually have to care about the other person. Kindness is to be helpful to them out of compassion and empathy. So what is this requirement? telling us to do, to do unto others as God has done unto you. That's why it's so important to pay attention to God's loving kindness, God's faithfulness, God's grace to us so that we can offer that to others. God has been faithful to you. Be faithful to those around you. 
God has forgiven you. Forgive those who hurt you. God has been patient with you. Be patient with others. God has not held anything back, loving you completely and passionately. Love completely and passionately. God has intervened for you in time of need. So show up for others in their time of need. What does God require of you? Loving kindness. And to complete the requirement, walk humbly with God. Live by faith. Live in faith. Humility isn't thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. It is showing a genuine, authentic interest in and concern for the other person. So the, this was interesting to me. The word humility has its roots in the word hummus, which means from the earth. It's a word used all the way back to the beginning of creation, when God creates people from the dirt. It relates to how God walked with us in the garden, even when we hid and were ashamed. How God walked out of the garden when we were kicked out. Our God interacts with God's chosen people. God speaks with us, hears our cries, and promises over and over again, I will be with you. This grounds us and keeps us mindful of God's grace. But to walk humbly with God is also to remember our place and to know that we stand with God not as equals, but as invited guests. Never forgetting for a moment that God is creator and we are God's beloved creation. To walk humbly with God is to remember with every step you take that you are mortal, not divine. Ironically, knowing that makes you appreciate all the more what it is as an honor to walk with God. Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with our God. It's a big requirement. But with the Holy Spirit living in and working in us, we can grow in our ability as followers of Christ, as citizens of the kingdom of God, to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. Amen.
You might have noticed there was no organ. <laughs> Pam came to work this morning very, very ill, a uh, nasty sore throat that she woke up with, and um, she tested it as not COVID, but uh, she has gone on to urgent care or somewhere. And so we will continue this service with, without music, and we'll just go for it. We won't be singing anything either. We're, you're retired. Thank you. <laughs> Living together as one body in Christ, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United as one body in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God does many things through our offerings. We remember that God's grace takes your offerings and helps us to proclaim God's good news to all the world. Let us pray. God of light, our world is a very dark place. Therefore, we offer the gifts of ourselves, our time, and our resources, trusting you will use them to set the world aglow with your loving presence. May our offerings continue to shine brightly so they may see our good works and give glory to you. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for them to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may have a seat for a moment. For those of you who are communing at home, please take your bread. The body of Christ given for you. And now your cup the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And for those who are communing here, the table is ready. Please come and receive.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. O God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven in us to be his body in the world, that more and more we will give you praise and serve your earth and its many people. Through Jesus Christ, our King. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.